Holy Spirit is the unseen moving force of God in the world. It was the Holy Spirit who inspired the apostles and prophets to lead people to God in the days of the early church. As the Holy Spirit inspired the writers of sacred scripture, so the same Spirit leads and guides us today. Jesus promised, I will send the Holy Spirit to inspire you with all the things I have taught you. Come Holy Spirit, inflame the hearts of all people with the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and all will be reborn. And you will renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, open our eyes and calm our minds. Fill our memories of the Father's love, of the Son's unceasing prayer, of the world and of your own presence within us. Holy Spirit, give us faith. Holy Spirit, Reveal to us the truth of the Father's unfailing promise, purpose, and plan, of the Son's victory and risen presence, the truth about ourselves, sinful, yet God's beloved people. Holy Spirit, give us hope. Holy Spirit, give us peace, peace with God and peace with all people. Kindle our desire for you. Strengthen our wills to live and serve. Teach us and lead us where you will. Holy Spirit, give us love. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? How then does each of us hear them in our own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others, scoffing, said, they have had too much new wine. The word of the Lord. My father was a good man. I wish you could have known him. He died 55 years ago last week. Like all of us, I suppose, he had his strong points and he had his weaknesses. When I was growing up, my dad had two bouts with heavy drinking. Once when I was two years old. I don't remember anything about that time. And again, when I was a sophomore in high school, I remember a lot about that time. In between and in the years following, Pop never took another drink. He came back from both episodes stronger than ever. He was a good man. A man with weaknesses, yes, but a good man. If you've ever been drunk or tipsy or inebriated or whatever word you want to use, Sometimes you remember the experience, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can tell others about the experience, and sometimes you can't. The literature tells us that over time, having too much to drink can be so significant, so defining, that it leaves a mark on a person and on those around. Those who know from experience say they are always recovering. Today, and in the coming days, we hear the story of people we know. They are members of our family, the early church, the first Christians. They, too, were good people. They, too, were people with their strengths and weaknesses. They were also people whom others dismissed. They've had too much new wine. Perhaps they had. Wine as you and I know it, and maybe a different wine as well a wine that gave them courage, the courage to step out of their old ways and in to new ways, ways that were unknown, unfamiliar, undefined, a wine that gave them wisdom, the wisdom to know the difference between accepting the things they could not change and changing the things they could the wine of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost was not a new feast for Mary or Peter or James. They had celebrated Pentecost many times, but never in the way they did this time. By this time, something else had happened in their lives someone else had happened 
in their lives. Someone so significant, so defining that their experience of that person had left a mark, a mark from which they would never recover, a mark that you and I bear today. Like those first Christians, we too have tasted the same heady wine of the Spirit. We too are good people. We too have our strengths and our weaknesses. The question before us all today is the same as 2,000 years ago. In this time of pandemic and distancing, this time of shelter and separation, do we have at least the same courage as they did? Do we have at least the same wisdom? As it has all throughout history, the Spirit continues to pour out a new and heady wine. What stories will they tell of us down the road? Will they scoff as they did on that first Pentecost? Will they wonder if we perhaps have had too much new wine? What kind of mark will this Pentecost leave?
Christ Jesus, before ascending into heaven, you promised to send the Holy Spirit to your apostles and disciples. Grant that the same Spirit may perfect in our lives the work of your grace and love. Grant us the spirit of wisdom that we may aspire to the things that last forever, the spirit of understanding to enlighten our minds with the brightness of your truth, the spirit of counsel that we may choose to do your will, seeking first the kingdom of God, the spirit of fortitude that we may bear our cross with you despite obstacles, the spirit of knowledge, that we may draw close to you and grow in holiness, the spirit of piety, that we may find peace and fulfillment in the service of God and others, the spirit of reverence, that we may be filled with a sense of awe in your presence. Teach us to be your faithful disciples and animate us in every way with your spirit. Amen. Amen. God of peace and justice, your risen son breathed the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and his mother on that first Easter Pentecost. You have bestowed heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon your church may retain all its force, and we would be your disciples of truth and love. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.